Well, shortly after her meeting in Downing Street, I spoke to the Belarus opposition leader, Svetlana Tikhonovskaya, and I started by asking her for her reaction to the gruesome death of Vitaly Shisov. You know, I, I was really shocked because when uh, we knew that he disappeared, I really believed that, uh, you know, he was kidnapped and he was brought to uh, Belarus in jail. I thought so. And uh, it was a shock for me in the morning to know that he uh, was found dead. I don't know who is responsible for this. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to guess. I just really uh, believe that Ukrainian police will make everything possible uh, and investigate this case. Now, this news, of course, came after the news from Tokyo. And what happened to the athlete there who criticised her coaches? What did you think of that? You know, I really understand Kristina Timanovskaya because uh, after you found strength and criticised power, uh, you know, you are becoming an enemy of this regime. And uh, Kristina understood this. And even though she, uh, I suppose, that she never participated in any rallies uh, against regimes, she was far away from, from uh, opposition, but it's very easy to become enemy in, in Belarus. Just say the truth, tell the truth, and you'll become enemy. But do you think something is changing? Because the young journalist who was seized off the aeroplane, now, as far as we know, he is alive because he was said to be under house arrest. His Twitter account has been active, although we don't know whether it's really him tweeting. So do you think something is changing in terms of the way Belarus reacts to its opponents? People uh, continue to fight, continue to uh, resist secretly because of uh, uh, the question of safeness. But in regime, uh, you know, regime is shaken. People who are uh, beside Lukashenko now, they understand that you have to choose if uh, it's necessary to be on this sinking boat or go together with people in, in better future. Now we've seen what may be a political assassination in Ukraine. Do you think that shows that the regime is emboldened, that the sanctions are not having any effect and that they are stepping up what they're prepared to do? First, real strong sanctions have been imposed just uh, a month ago after an air flight because uh, the previous sanctions they were like moral ones, just to inform that we are watching, we will be uh, consistent in our policy. And after hijacking, it was first real sanctions. They can't work immediately. No, it's, it's, uh, it needs time. Can you tell me about your meeting with Boris Johnson this morning? What did you say to each other? It was very warm meeting and um, I, I can't tell you what uh, Prime Minister said, you know, but I asked uh, Boris Johnson to keep Belarus on the agenda internationally, uh, to discuss in, in uh, Belarus in OEC, on different events, uh, you know, on different platforms, just not to lose focus about Belarus. This is what regime wants, for people forget about us. But now we don't feel abandoned. And do you want Britain to help people on the ground? in Belarus? Of course, when we are talking about assistance, we need people on the ground, first of all. Those who are fighting uh, in, in such awful circumstances. What sort of help? Uh, it's uh, technical help, it's uh, financial help to uh, people that, that have to pay uh, to the lawyers that defending them. It's help to human rights defending centers. It's help to mass media because now uh, regime is destroying everything and they need to, uh, to survive somehow. But if they have the support of Russia and of Putin specifically, why do they need to worry about anything? The situation in Belarus is not uh, comfortable for Russia because, uh, you know, we are very close to Moscow. It's ongoing crisis. Uh, Lukashenko now toxic to Western countries. Nobody wants to deal with him. Sanctions are being imposed uh, on the regime. Uh, so it's, it, it, it's becoming a problem for Kremlin as well. And for you personally, where is the greatest fear? Is it for your family, your husband, or for you personally? For my country. But now that we've seen what happens to people who stand up, 
Does that change the way you feel about your personal security? Everybody has to take care about uh, personal security. We don't know how long uh, the regime's hands are. But I know that even if, for example, I disappear or I'm kidnapped, it can happen. I really think so. Uh, the, the surprising will not end because it's not about one person at the moment. It's not about me. It's about 97% uh, of our population. Thank you very much, Lydia. Thank you.